Okay, guys, what up, and welcome back into my channel, guys. Um, today, we're going to be talking about Diane Cohen being a new offensive coordinator. So, I was just wondering if I had Lyme Cohen as offensive coordinator as a replacement to Kevin O'Connell, now head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. Um. Additionally, LA is also reuniting with Greg Olson. He's been the offensive coordinator for the Raiders under John Gruden. He was a member of Sean Bay's original 2017 offensive coaching, coaching crew. What his veteran coach learned um, after the departure of both Gruden from Las Vegas? The opportunity to call play with Derek Carr and the Raiders offense over the second half of the season and into the playoffs. So, Cohen first joined the base 2018 coaching staff as the assistant wide receivers coach. Prior to the 2020 season, he was reassigned to the title of assistant quarterbacks coach, which he held for one year. Cohen was hired for by the University of Kentucky as the team's offensive coordinator last offseason under Mark Stops. And the Wildcats finished 10 and 3 in 2021, in part due to solid offensive production. The young coach is likely on the fast track to becoming a head coach in the NFL, similar to those that have held the title of offensive coordinator with the Rams under McVay. Quite a promotion for Cohen as he moved the ladder from assistant receivers coach to the top dog in offense in just three years. It's not so much of a matter of it, but when the offensive coordinator will get his chance, I assume that he joined the head coaching ranks alongside former McVay assistants Matt LaFleur. Zach Taylor, Brendan Staley, and Kevin O'Connell. McVay and the Rams still have a number of coaching positions to fill ahead of this offseason, including tight ends coach after Wes Phillips followed O'Connell to the Vikings. It'll be interesting to follow how Los Angeles adapts its offense in its second year with quarterback Matthew Stafford at the helm. It's reasonable to expect a significant step forward for the offense, which struggled with turnovers and sputtered at times. Uh, this year, we're really going to be looking to see if the Rams can evolve their running game after struggling to get it much reduction from the aspect of this offense during the playoff run. Uh, should we expect the Kelsey game makers to be workers back and can the Rams utilize Daryl Henderson when it maximizes his receiving and change of place talents? How will the receiver position shake out with the return of Robert Woods from his mid-season ACL injury? Will the Rams retain or replace OBJ? Los Angeles also has a number of young receiver talents they want to develop, including Joe Van Jefferson, Tutu Atwell, Jake Paris, Ben Brown, Bruce Hopkins, and Kendrick Blanton. I'm holding the title of offensive coordinator under Sean McVay. Will mostly most likely lead to a lot of personal success over the course of his career. There still remains plenty of open questions for Cohen to navigate in his new role, and can he be successful as the team's new offensive coordinator? So, um, it's been really interesting. I think he got a huge, um, got a huge, um, kind of a step up. Um, he had a huge promotion, I guess we'll call it, um, so he moved up quickly, I think, it might be good for him, maybe bad, I mean, I'm not sure about all that, but, I mean, really, really, really have to, um, wait and see what, he's got in store for us. Um, so, also, looking at free agency and stuff, the Rams have, um, we could lose three of our starting five off in the linemen as well as a top reserve. Andrew Whitworth is also, although under contract for next season, made us have a Super Bowl win. It's perfect way to come to career. Center Brian Allen and guard Austin Cooper are both free agents, adding NFL title to the resumes. May bring a bevy of suitors and backup tackle in Joseph Nelton, second 
Angel Gardner could easily be for starter. Money pricing him out of Los Angeles. Conventional thinking supposes that LA could and should use one of her earliest picks to fill in any possible departures. Um, so, yeah. Brand may be better served to wait and find a later round development player. If LA decides they can't, they can't afford to wait, it will be because of the wide zone run schemes. As a general rule, the scheme does not require dominant blockers for success. Um, so a couple people we could look at is Nick Ford for Utah. He is 6'5", 315 pounds. First team all pack 12 in 2020 and 2021. Selections played multiple snaps at center, guard, and tackle. On the other, he received no postseason all star invites. Ditto the NFL Combine. Did not find his name in uh, any of the leading top 150 player rankings. Um, so, yeah. Next up, we got Doug Grammer out of Illinois, 6'2, 301 pounds. He has all the political traits of a Big Ten offensive lineman except one size. He's relatively short and stocky, but he's powerful in the run game. Has a true mean streak. Plays every game in fact he logged 51 starts for Illinois. Cream's ability to pivot kept Pittsburgh Steelers starting center and third round. Draft was Kendrick Green at the guard position at Illinois. Kramer has shown that he's good in the wide zone team. Next up, we got Keegan Kreider out of Wyoming, 6'4", 310. Durable, versatile, and athletic. Started every game of his college career, 43 consecutive games. Both guard as well as center in a run oriented offensive team. So, um, yeah. It's just, you know, it's just going to be a you know, rush on the day and less need not to do. Kind of thing, but um, that is going to be all for today's video, guys. And um, I will see you guys next time.